just waiting on some eyeballs. As you know, I ain't gonna talk to myself, even though I'm technically talking to myself. But I can't do my greeting unless one set of eyeballs is tuned in. But oh, this is torture. Where y'all be at at seven o'clock every day? Well, what's up, Groove Earthlings? I'm going to go ahead and do the... Oh, there's one. I, oh, it's just my brother, Kenny. He in the other room watching this. <laughs> hey, Kenny. He can literally probably hear me. Thank you for tuning in, brother, and giving me the opportunity to go ahead and start talking so I'm not talking to myself. First of all, I just want to... Uh, boy, I feel like I'm, I'm at church, but I just want to give all praise and honor and glory to God for all these praise reports that I'm receiving from people who drinking the tea, using the soaps, the lotions, the salves, the everything. I mean, y'all, I, I just want to publicly thank God for the gift because nothing I do is, is because of my, nothing I do is because of my talent or, or skill or schooling or, or any of that it's all due to my obedience and listening to the voice of God and y'all my spirit be so high when people inbox me to give me praise report on T they got for issues that doctors say they, they can't do nothing for it they can't do nothing with it give you these pills and, I, and they drink the tea and they good it's God is amazing God is amazing. And by God, I mean what, whatever level you believe God at. I don't know what level you believe God at. I don't know how you worship God, but that that entity, that spirit, whatever I create or whatever you want to call it. When you acknowledge him in all your ways, when you acknowledge God in all your ways, and give him glory in everything you do. And stop yourself. Skirt right in the middle of a petty moment. He will reward you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Y'all, I'm, I'm watching myself go through this uh, obstacle course called life. I'm, 40, I'm on the 47th chapter. Boy, this is exciting. I, I wish I could watch myself on Netflix. I wish I could go back and just watch all this on Netflix, even though I would have cringed at some of them episodes and probably couldn't even halfway finish the whole episode, I wish I could just go back and review everything that God has brought me through, y'all. Everything that was designed to kill me, everything that was designed to kill my self-esteem, everything that was designed to redirect me from serving my community to preaching his word, everything that the enemy tried to inject into me that was not included in my DNA, baby, my body rejected that. Because see, when you pray, when you pray for, your, for God's will to be done in your life all the way, when you invite God to come into your life for real, when you give your whole spirit to God, it's not yours anymore. It does not belong to you. You are literally just a carcass. You are literally just meat covering up a spirit. When you walk in the spirit, you see others that are walking in the spirit as well. And you also see others who are pretending to be walking in the spirit, but do not have a spiritual connection within them because they're still connected to the outside. They're still connected to the carcass. But those who have locked in on what God is and who God truly is, you should have found out during this uh, COVID lockdown you should have found out who God truly is when you couldn't go to church every Sunday. When you had to worship at home, you should have been introduced to God formally. That was your first formal introduction. To you And you know what I mean. You know that moment when you was missing church so bad, you had to worship some kind of way, baby. You got your church music on. You did what you had to do to get back in the presence of God. 
And then guess what? You realize you can do that yourself at any time. You ain't got to wait till Sunday morning. You can worship and praise and talk to God and edify Him at any time. You ain't got to wait to do it. You ain't got to have no pump and circumstance. You ain't even got to get dressed. You ain't got to brush your teeth. You ain't got to recite back all them salutations that you read in the Bible about God. God knows who he is. God knows what he did. God knows what he's doing. All God wants is your acknowledgement that he is God. That he is the great I am. That he is nothing and everything at the same time. And that you cannot do nothing without the acknowledgement of who God is. See, when you start doing that, that's when your life will take off. That's when that cloud of depression will lift. That's when people's opinion of you don't matter anymore because to God, you are precious. And I'm going to give you a great example. I know some of y'all got kids who are, are calling hell down upon your life. They doing all kind of stuff for you. They got you just going in circles. But guess what? You love them. They are your creation. They came from you. And even though they frustrate you, even though they make you cuss, even though they make you feel some type of way, they are yours. They belong to you. Now put that on a bigger scale of your creator. Who created the one 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 to make you end up here? Yeah, we might do some frustrating stuff to our creator. Yeah, our creator might cringe watching us bump our heads like we do when our kids trying to learn how to walk. When we do when our kids trying to learn their independence. That's how God do when we try to step out there and find out who we are. Oh, it be the bumps and bruises, it be the knocks, but he got to let us knock so we can learn. You got to let the baby fall and get up on their own so they can learn to get up on their own. And we've been taught to reach up to mama every time we fall, the preacher. And God wants us to get up on our own when we fall. Because if somebody's scooping you up every time you stumble and fall, you will never know that you could have got up on your own. If a person like me never came into your life and tell you that you can control everything that's going on with your body by drinking a tea or taking a custom capsule that I can crush up and make for you while you wait, nature, you can be healed through nature. You can be healed through nature. But if you don't know that, you'll keep taking the pills. You'll just think about it. When the doctors diagnose us with something, and I'm going to be the first to testify. Y'all, in 2010, when I first got my official diagnosis that I had lupus, all these years, I've been having lupus since the age of 11. My brother watching the live, he can testify that. This scar under my eye used to be an open, oozing wound on my face. And my mama took me to doctor and doctor and doctor and doctor. And all they could say was I had ulcers on my body. This spot right here, this my hair has never grown right here. Even before this was like this, my hair has never grown right there. Even from a kid, all my baby pictures, that spot is missing. Right before I was healed from lupus, I started, one of these things started forming right here on my lip. And I used to be so ashamed of my scars. I used to be so ashamed of it, but then I thought about this. This thing been on me from birth because this patch I've always had a patch missing right here but it's also a perfect line right where my third eye is right where that little crease is keep going keep going right here
these scars on my head are not random. It's almost like Egyptian hieroglyphics. This right here, and I, I'm, I'm going to post a picture on this live. This scar right here, three years ago, was not this scar. This scar right here spelled the words Thai. This scar right here had a T and a Y. But guess what? When, when me and my husband got on one accord and we got into one step with each other, it turned into one solid piece. Can't make it up. I'm just realizing it while I'm showing y'all my scars. But y'all, when, when I got the diagnosis in 2010 that I had lupus, I was already not feeling well. But the doctor who diagnosed me with lupus was my neurologist. I wasn't being seen for any issues dealing with lupus because my knees have always hurt. I had been doing her for over 20 some years. I expected for my wrist to hurt. I expected to be swollen at the end of the day because I was a hairstylist. And that's what hairstylists go through. I expected for every, I thought everybody hurt like I did. I thought the sun burnt everybody the way it burnt my skin when I stepped outside. I couldn't understand why kids would be outside playing so long. I had all these symptoms going on, but the thing that alarmed the neurologist was my red and white blood cell count. And he said, I can't believe you're alive. Now that alarmed me. And he immediately ordered a series of tests. He sent me to the oncology lab because he didn't know what was going on. When I got the diagnosis that it was lupus, everything that I was dealing with made sense. But because I believed what the doctor told me because he had degrees, I felt like he went to college. He got to know his stuff. He gave me the medicine to take. I took the medicine. I read what the symptoms was. Everything lined up. I, I, it was no denial. I, I knew. I knew it was lupus. So I took the medicine. I took the steroids. I took the Plaquenil. I was on all kind of stuff. I accepted being sick. And I got sicker. Just think about it, y'all. When I found out that I had lupus, that's when I got sick in 2010. I had been having lupus since I was 11 years old. And yeah, I had some things going on my whole life, but I fought through it because I didn't have a choice, because it didn't have a name. And I'm realizing sometimes when doctors give things names and they give us this long list of symptoms and, and what, is, what it is and all that stuff, we, we give into it. We even change our prayer posture. We don't pray for God to take it completely away. We just pray for God to at least ease our pain. Lord, just help me so I can get up one more day. Lord, give me. we don't never say completely gone when they say cancer. We don't, you know, AIDS, lupus, anything the doctor say is no cure for. We just accept that and take the pills and hope for a better quality of life, but pills are not designed to heal anything. That's why you have to keep getting the prescription. And if you miss a dose, you get sicker. That's the whole design. I ain't no conspiracy theories. That's just common sense. That's just from being an herbalist. Because I often wonder why doctors don't suggest all the things that I've learned when I was getting my certificate to be a herbologist. I learned what what plants heal what things. And some of it, some of the simplest things that's been growing around us for years is just a combination of that with other things. I'm wondering why they don't tell us that because they want us to take pills. And I said all that to say this, I went all the way around the corner to get across the street to give you the example of how when a baby is learning to walk and you see them fall 
You do not scoop them up immediately. You stand back and see just how they're going to pick themselves back up again. God don't make nothing happen in your life. God gives you free will to do what you need to do in your life. Do what you want to do in your life. God sits back. And waits to see how you're going to figure this thing out. God sits back to see how you're going to pick yourself back up again. But if you're watching your child trying to learn how to walk and they do a face plant on their face and they bust their lip, you ain't finna let them figure that out on their own. Because instinctively, you know they can't figure that out. All they know, they lip bleed. That's where mama come in. That's where creator come in. That's when God, I can't handle this. And God say, I know it. Here I come. Thank you for acknowledging that. And God fixes that busted lip. God hides that situation you was in. God allows you to take that stuff to your grave. Because don't nobody know about it but you and God. Don't nobody know exactly how many times a child bumped his head or fell or, or nothing. But mama, mama know how many times it was almost a close call where they done, a baby done rolled off the bed trying to learn how to roll themselves off. But mama caught them most of the time. Sometimes the baby fell. But the baby don't remember. The baby have no recollection. Sometimes you done went to some dark places in your life. And God is telling you to let that go because he threw it into the sea of forgetfulness. Why do you keep getting your pole and fishing it back out again? From this day forward, stop reliving what you did. Stop reliving who you used to be. Stop reliving what you used to do if you do not do it anymore. But if you're still dipping and dabbing in it, this is your warning to pick a side. Whatever that is. Whatever causes you not to be able to look yourself in the mirror. Because that's how you judge whether God approves or not. Because God is right here. And if you can't look at God. You don't need to be doing it. You don't need to say it. You don't need to be involved in it. If you have to hide it from God. That's as simple as I can make that message. If you are not pleased with it, God is here. God is spirit. God is inside of you. This is just me. That spirit inside of you don't feel right. You can feel it in your gut. That's why your stomach don't feel right about certain stuff. When you had a funny feeling about something, but you kept doing it anyway. Then you ended up in a situation you couldn't tell nobody but God. And couldn't let God, nobody but God get you out of it because you wouldn't dare. You wouldn't dare tell somebody what happened. Only your creator knows. The ones that watches you fall and get back up. Until you figure it out. After a while, <laughs> you got it. You walking. You don't go there anymore. You don't do that anymore. You don't even talk to them anymore. Their words don't affect you anymore. The shade don't affect you anymore. All you want to do is spread peace. And if that's not what you want to do, I suggest that's what you start wanting to do. If you want to survive whatever's going to happen in this world, and you really want a relationship with God, and you want to get on the ship when it's time to go, let go of the past because it has no place the future is dragging you down and it's creating a narrative that does not exist your mind is the best thing that ever happened to you and the worst thing that ever happened to you. your mind can be a weapon against you if you overthink everything that's why they say give it all to God cast all your cares on him that don't mean don't deal with it that mean don't deal with it if that makes sense. That means don't obsess about it. 
when you start thinking about it. Meditate, pray, put some church music on, whatever you got to do to get yourself past that moment. Whatever happened, happened, it's over. You can't go back and say what you need to say. You can't go back and undo nothing. What you need is ahead of you. And if you keep looking behind you, pieces of what's ahead of you are going to keep disappearing because somebody else is going to snatch it. Keep looking forward. I ain't finna tell you to forgive nobody. That's on you. But don't let it hold no space in your head no more. Don't let that thing create a narrative of who you are. Something happened to me as a teenager that set the course of how I let people treat me because I felt like trash. I didn't get the chance to be a little princess and you know I, I didn't I didn't get that chance early I felt like trash and unfortunately I didn't have anyone to empower me like I needed to be empowered after the incident because I couldn't tell anybody I held it secret for 33 years And for 33 years, that thing that happened set the course for how I would shut down and build walls up in every relationship that I had except for this one. And I don't talk my relationship business on Facebook. If you follow me, you should know that. But I can not tell you this. Once I let the demons of the past go, once I let myself process what happened to me, and I truly let it go, my marriage thrived. It was already okay. We was all, we already knew we were sold, maybe That's a no-brainer. We everybody can see that. But to have someone who saw me for the first time in the eighth grade. Right after the incident happened, and all he saw was beauty. Beauty that he was so afraid to approach. It took him 30 years to say something to me, and this boy been around me most of my life. When I was in beauty school, he was next to me in barber school. I never saw him. When I was doing gospel rap, he was doing the design covers for the record label I was with. When I worked in the mall, he was in there four years I was in there. I never saw him, but he knew I was in there. And he thought I was so unreachable, so untouchable. And here I was feeling like trash. Sometime I wonder what would have happened if, if I would have connected with Ty back then. And I would have heard them positive affirmations from him. But I'm also glad that I went through what I went through because when he tell me he loved me, I believe it. And he ain't did nothing to show me otherwise. He ain't, I ain't never had to, uh, nobody come to me as a woman by nothing. I ain't had no, none of that. The first text he sent me after I gave him my phone number was, I've been loving you since the eighth grade. He meant that. And it's significant that he's been loving me since that time because that's when I stopped loving myself. Ain't no coincidences. Ty lived right around the corner from me and I never saw him. He lived right across the street from the candy house man that I went to every day. I had some favorite sugar cookies I liked that he sold and Ty used to buy them all up before I could get around there and I didn't know it was him. And I sure that the shirt is. This is your season for letting whatever that thing is that happened to you go. Let it go so you can live. Let it go so you can be glowing. 
naturally. Let it go so that darkness that's inside of you can finally evict itself out of your body. Because there's some light in there that's trying to shine through your eyes. God is trying to shine through your eyes. Let the cloud go. There's nothing you can do about what happened back then. But it's everything you can do about what's going to happen from this day forward. And if you were sitting there thinking about you need to pray for to just die in your sleep. And, and, and you don't want to kill yourself. But you don't want to be here no more. Stick around. Because it's about to get lit around here. That's for everybody who's a true believer. And I ain't talking about no true believer in, in, in what you was force fed. I'm talking about a true believer in who God really is. Stick around. Just hang in there. Hang in there and see. Remember, I told you this. If this was your last day, don't make this your last day. Because see, right before the glow up, you do want to leave here. You do want to kill yourself. I overstand. That's the enemy. <laughs> Trying to cheat you out of that next chapter that's coming. That's why you feel so strongly that you don't want to be here. That's not even your thoughts. That ain't coming from you. That's coming from the enemy. That's coming from the enemy. That's coming from the dark side of you that's trying to override the light inside of you. Don't listen to it. If you got to find you some meditation music on YouTube, if you got to go to Amazon uh, Modern Gospel Station and just listen to the words of the gospel music back to back, man, get your, get your love back for God. Get it back. I know some stuff sketchy stuff doesn't happen where you don't even think God is real. God is absolutely real, but God letting you fall till you learn how to walk. Please don't, don't take it personally. Whatever's happening, and I'm talking about whatever's, I'm talking about you done lost loved ones, whatever. Just see what's going to happen after this. Because it's coming. I feel a shift. It's a shift. And whoever is listening and whoever believes that Jesus, Yeshua, whatever you want to call him, he was sacrificed on that cross for what's finna happen. It's a movement. And whether you believe that event happened just like it did in the movies, because it probably didn't. Somebody back then was sacrificed for us to have the right to claim that. That last energy that was expelled on that cross for us to grasp it. That's called hope. That's called faith. And it's really all you need if you believe that event happened. If you believe that that man sacrificed his life and let whatever happen, what, however it happened, he let it happen for now, for the future. Because let me tell you something. They killed Jesus because he was against religion. The religious people killed him because they wanted to remain religious. Jesus was trying to set them free and let them know that God gave them free will and he prayed that they use that to choose peace and love. But it's free to choose. That's what Jesus died for. That's what Yeshua died for. I don't know what his name is. His name might be Jesse Bernard. I don't know what the man's name is, but the spirit, the story, Every story has some truth in the middle of it. They threw Shakespeare up in it and threw us off with the thou withers and thithers. But in between all that, it might have been Horace. I don't know. We finding out bits and pieces. We may not never know how we got here. We might not never know how the beginning started. We might not know nothing. Adam and Eve might be Adam, A-T-O-M, and evolution, E-V-E. 
Adam and evolution. Adam and Eve. It might be. We don't know. But just like the past that you holding on, it's nothing you can do about how we first got here. Ain't no sense in debating about it. Ain't no sense in debating about what Moses and them did. Because it's what matters is what's going to happen when you get when you stop watching this live video. And I'm just asking you on this day, choose peace in every situation. Let whatever that thing is go so God can fill you up with light. Let the darkness leave your body so God can fill it with light so you can want to live again. I'm living proof. I hope y'all have a groovy day. And I thank everybody who kept watching this video all the way to the end. Man, I love y'all on purpose. You heard me? Bye.